that time again, I like to keep you ahead of the curve, I don't like you being blindsided. So, I'm going to be going through everything you need to know within luxury fashion. Links will be below or in the shopping prompt on the screen. Let's kick it off with luxury news. Spring Summer 2024 Fashion Month is coming to a close. By the time this comes out, there will still be a little bit left of Paris Fashion Week, but I thought that I would give you some of the highlights. New York brought us Peter Doe's debut for Helmut Lang. He was announced as the new creative director for the brand this year, I believe. Highly anticipated debut. We were interested to see what he was gonna give us. Turns out, not that much. Generally, from what I've sort of read of the reviews, it was it was fine, it was meh. There was nothing like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. Um, there was a lot of this sort of seatbelt looking uh, detail. But look, one season in, a creative director should not be judged by, you know, one show. So let's see, as time goes on, can he grow into the role a bit more? What does Helmut Lang look like under Peter Doe? I also came across an article that went through the sort of like three biggest shows from New York Fashion Week that had the biggest social media buzz. So there's a social analytics company called Listen First and basically they measure likes, reactions, comments, shares, all of that around these shows, right? And they compared New York Fashion Week shows from this season to February. And the highest engagement score went to Michael Kors, I know. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. So yes, Michael Kors had the highest engagement score. Um, with lots of people sharing it, all of that. It also comes down to like celebrities seen at these shows and people might share pictures of those celebrities being front row. Either way, the second um, one that had the most buzz was Tory Burch. And actually this was the show that I saw a lot of very positive reviews about. People really liked the vision and actually found it really interesting and you know somewhat exciting so that's good. And then the last one was Ralph Lauren. London Fashion Week. I did a little vlog in case you haven't seen it, shameless plug, I shall link it below, from two emerging London designers that you should know about. Um, but aside from that, the biggest name that still shows at London Fashion Week is Burberry. A lot of the big British brands have moved on to mainly Paris Fashion Week, to be honest with you, like Vivienne Westwood, Stella McCartney, Victoria Beckham, they've all sodded off to Paris. But Burberry is still there and as we know, they're trying to steer Burberry in a new direction under Daniel Lee. We've talked about it a couple of times on this channel. But as part of the push, they took over London in a number of ways. Number one, they renamed Bond Street to Burberry Street. They did like a bit of a collaboration with Norman's Cafe uh, to serve English breakfasts from the van for like a certain number of days. They will next be traveling to Seoul and Shanghai in October. Uh, but anyway, back to their Spring Summer 2024 show. Uh, again, I mean, as we usually see with Burberry, we see reworked trenches, blah, blah, blah. There was a lot of sort of drop waste of those trenches. But aside from that, honestly, couldn't pick it out in a lineup. Like, it was fine. There was nothing particularly memorable or exciting about it. Um, I know that Daniel Lee is putting a lot of focus on shoes and bags. Again, the bags weren't really anything particularly, sta you know, none of them were really standing out. The shoes maybe, I can see a lot of sort of new focus on the shoes, maybe the shoes will do well, only time will tell. They have also done a crystal sort of Birkenstocky, Burberry stock that I predict will do a cloggy vibes that, you know, if things have been going the way things have been going, then they might do quite well. Then we move on to Milan, which featured a lot of debuts, a lot of firsts. So. We had the Attico's first runway show. Love the Attico, the two women behind it are great. Party dresses, fun pieces, right? We also saw Bally's new creative director following Ru Ruigi's a couple of months ago. Peter Hawkins for Tom Ford, who basically out Gucci'd Gucci. He gave us Tom Ford's Gucci. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, it's the most excited I've been about Tom Ford for a long time. It was 
sexy and fun and you know fresh for the brand so I'm excited about him he's been working for Tom Ford for you know many many years so he, he's carrying on the intended vision Sabato Dasano for Gucci again I've done a whole video going in depth about this but that one had very very two camps of views loved it or hated it missed my Alessandra Michele was like this is boring this is nothing all the way to I love the new sort of refined um everyday look it's very much in two camps one thing though that I did note that I believe he said before the show is that he wants to make people fall in love with Gucci again and to that I say how bold of you to assume we weren't already in love with her okay but anyway that's just rubbed me the wrong way a little bit but um then we also had Moschino as we know Jeremy Scott left Moschino after a number of years as, as creative director and for this show they had four stylists come in pull from the archives and give a bit of a twist on Moschino and if you look at the show you can see where one stylist ends and another begins and I actually found it really quite interesting mainly because I loved the turtlenecks with the crystals and do I want one? Of course I do. And gimmicks, we've become quite used to these within fashion weeks. Is this brand called Avavav or AVAVAV? Either way, they love a good gimmick and this season was no different. They sort of staged their show as though everybody was in a rush and I actually found it hilarious. I thought it was funny. They've done previous shows that as the models walked down, the clothes sort of like fell off them. I think it's theater, it's fun. I personally think it's pretty genius, but that's just me. Um, we are in the throes of Paris Fashion Week. I'm sure I will touch on this next month when we have a bit more, bit more info. There's been a theft at Balmain. This was crazy. So, Olivier Roosting posted on Instagram um, this crazy story. So today I went to the office at 9 a.m. waiting for the last pieces for our show, our Balmain show in September, this fashion week, okay? I was starting to create some looks with my team and our driver called us and said that he was hijacked by a group of people and more than 50 Balmain pieces stolen. He was driving through the airport to the Balmain headquarters. This is so unfair, my team and I have worked so hard. We will work more days and nights. Our suppliers will work days and nights as well, but this is so disrespectful. Wanted to share this with you and remind you, don't take anything for granted. Please be safe, this is the world we're living in. Crazy, a lot of people saying like, this must be an inside job because how did they know and all of this. And I can only sort of imagine especially this close to a show, like low level of things, how simply annoying this must be for everybody's work that's involved. However, did he deliver a good sodding show? He did. They managed to pull it together in the number of weeks. How many? This is September the 16th this happened and they showed this, what, so two weeks? Two weeks they managed to pull it together and honestly, they did great. There was a lot of craftsmanship as we tend to see in Balmain. I particularly liked the beginning of the collection, which was a bit more sort of like tailored and, oh, she's giving very much like a powerful woman um, who takes no prisoners, which I enjoyed. So they managed to make a lemonade out of the lemons, if you know what I mean. Sarah Burton leaves Alexander McQueen. She um, was given the role of creative director following Alexander McQueen's death in 2010. She has been uh, at the helm ever since and she has worked for the company for I believe 26 years. She was the person that made most sense at the time and also when you work that closely with the namesake of the brand, there's a very, very hard boots to fill and I'm sure that she did the best job that anybody could have. So there's, it's not been decided or announced who's going to fill the role of what Alessandro Michele is, uh, you know, he's a free agent at the moment. I, I mean, I don't even know if that's a particularly good fit, but I don't know. Maybe we need somebody sort of emerging that's got the fire and the, um, and the passion that Alexander McQueen had, but unclear. I shall keep you updated as we get more info. Ooh, here's a little bit of like fashion gossip. Apparently you can pay for front row. <gasps> now, I don't know if you know this, but with certain brands, they're never like the creme de la creme. And by creme de la creme, I'm talking about Dior, Louis Vuitton, all of that, okay? 
sort of smaller brands have been known to partner with like Amex or hotels and for a certain you know couple of thousand three thousand dish whatever dollars pounds you can pay to have to go to the show have that experience as part of like a package right these things exist however Louis Pisano who is like a fashion journalist basically retweeted re-exed I can't be bothered uh retweeted this screenshot or did he even post it it was a screenshot of somebody's close friend's story that basically said look I'm selling tickets to these shows let me know if you're interested the show the after party I think that was mainly it let me know if you're interested and the person who posted that is the VIC manager so this is the very important client manager of certain brands those are very important clients are deemed as basically high spenders right a certain number of um vic's will be invited to shows that's how i got involved in like fendi show and actually i don't like spend that much they just sort of put me forward and i ended up there right but that's like the category that i was seated with okay apparently they they like bribe different levels of people at the shows so like you will pay i will tell you some of the prices you'll pay x number of you know thousands of dollars to go and the security guard will be bribed to let you in and that this person will be bribed and blah 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 and obviously they're the manager of the vic clients and they'll sort of just like get you in that i don't know but this is interesting dior is six thousand two hundred dollars um balmat is three thousand eight hundred dollars and chanel is price upon request <laughs> <laughs> so very interesting very in it was also confirmed by brian boy as well so he's definitely a sort of like seen this happen i thought it was fascinating and a little bit of fashion gossip moving into new and noteworthy gosh i can't move my shoulders in this that was terrible new collaboration tiffany and ramoa they didn't give us any time on this okay because they announced that a collaboration was coming gave us nothing dropped the collaboration on the uh was it, what was it the 26th of september of course it's all sold out blah 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 right but overview there were three products involved by the way these are lvmh siblings they are both under the lvmh umbrella so collaborations within the umbrella make sense the first piece is the carry-on which sort of has this it's in the um aluminium metal you know signature remower look case whatever and then it has a sort of rock cut design that you know semi mimics the diamonds or how diamonds shine and whatever and refract the light oh my gosh the physics is coming into use um and then you have the tiffany blue on the handles and on the straps on the inside of the case and on the wheels i did like it on the wheels that was three thousand six hundred twenty five dollars 2670 pounds then we move on to the jewelry personal case this is like the personal clutch that they do in the polycarbonate so it was all tiffany blue but when you open it it's not a bag it's a jewelry case six sections um all you know like velvet all tiffany blue that was 2225 dollars 1660 pounds and then you have the ps de resistance which was this sort of vanity jewelry case which was a hybrid of both of these things it was like the carry-on but it had the interior of the little jewelry personal box and together it is this crazy beautiful piece uh, for $4,875 or £3,590. pounds. It was available online and uh, in select Romoa stores and of course all sold out. What a flex. What a fabulous airport flex. We also have a new collaboration from Telfar and Ugg. This is the second time I believe that they've worked together. The first time was in 2021 and this time it's sort of a denim shearling combination so you have the signature telfar shopping bag in three sizes in the denim shilling trim and also little telfar ugg boot situation jimmy choo and jean paul gautier collaborating jean paul gautier does a lot of collaborations in his normal line and also in couture which we're going to get to but this time around he's just finished a collaboration with knowles charlotte knowles's brand and in October is dropping one with Jimmy Choo that is obviously footwear focused. And I believe this is the first footwear collaboration. Have I made that up? No. Mm. I, yeah, okay. I'm going to commit.
admit, I'm gonna admit, yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Then Jean-Paul Gaultier Couture, which every Couture season is designed by a different designer. Next season, which is going to show in January, is going to be in collaboration with Simone Rocha. So imagine very much a lean on femininity and frills and bows and all of that, you know, sort of princessy vibes. She recently showed in London Fashion Week, I believe, and she also debuted a collaboration with Crocs. Now, as we know, not the biggest Croc fan. These Crocs uh, do not look like stereotypical Crocs. Arguably, they look worse. <laughs> They look like they're sort of rock climbing shoes, which practicality-wise, I'm sure they do the job. Wonderful. But they, they, I mean, you wouldn't wear them on a Friday night, would you, to go for drink? It's just, anyway. So those are coming, if that's your vibe. Also, I believe last time I touched on Banana Republic and Peter Doe's collaboration. Now, for Peter Doe's actual show, like I said, he's been um, doing, he's in the creative designer role for Helmut Lang. He also does have his own line that shows in Paris, uh, which everybody loves. And apparently he kept all the best designs for his show and for his Banana Republic collaboration. He showed some of the collaboration during his show. And people are very excited about it. Uh, launches on the 10th of October and I couldn't sort of find the full range of pricing or anything but for a pair of trousers you're looking at about $300 and for a blazer $700. By no means cheap. Moving into hot new items. Dior has dropped a new bag. This is the Dior Miss Dior. It is, uh, comes in a few colours pink, white, black, and almost like a pastel yellow. And I sort of didn't really pay much attention to this until I sort of realized that, oh, actually, no, this is a launch that they're pushing because this reminds me so much of a wallet on chain that they already do. But they've just sort of bulked it out a bit more to make it more of an everyday bag. Also comes with a, a chain crossbody strap that has, a you know, a leather panel at the top there for, um, so it doesn't eat into your bones. Um. I think, I mean, look, it's an easy, it's an easy to use bag. It just sort of surprised me because it was like, aren't you already sort of doing this under the, the wallet on chain category? I don't know. In the Battle of the Clogs, Louis Vuitton uh, has joined the battle. Fendi has recently released clogs that are sort of hailed to be doing very well. Loewe has been doing a sort of shearling lined Birkenstock thing. Basically, everybody's copying Birkenstocks. And Louis Vuitton, not one to be left out, has also wanted to be involved. They've got one that's got the LV monogram all over it, and then there's one that is shearling. So don't be surprised if you keep seeing more of those, especially this sort of autumnal time, they're going to be very popular. And then lastly, another pair of shoes, but this is more of a, you know, a little heel. These little Miu Miu Rose mules. I mean, I feel like it has all of the elements to do very well. We're loving a rose, you know, sort of embellish applique going on. It actually, mm, do you want to know what? It does read very Magda Boutram, does it not? But, and it's that sort of Louboutin dolly mule style. Very cute, very pretty, very, you know, stereotypically feminine and girly and all of that. And I predict, I predict a popular little moment with them. Guys, let me know what you thought of the news this month. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.